Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. I hope you're finding these editing videos helpful in some form. This week again, the assets are down below in the description if you want to follow along. Now, I've, this pace of this video is slightly faster, but that's simply because the editing of it is down to you and what you want to get from it. So I didn't want to drag out the actual editing side of it, but hopefully it's just in, at the right pace for you to follow along. Also down below, there is a free ebook for you as well. Now this ebook uh, is a part of a volume that I was working on last year that I'm now revamping and it's turning into a course and the course is The Art of Photoshop. So if you're interested in it, have a look out for it. Uh, but what this book is, it's a short ebook. It's only 35 pages long. And it looks at the considerations to make when you are creating composites. The considerations in the form of compositional elements. And how to lead a viewer through your image. So hopefully you get something from that. And if you do, please leave a comment below. I'd also love to know if you don't get anything from it as well. And I'd love to know why you didn't get anything from it. Was it the way it was worded, the description? The images themselves might not be your cup of tea, but the elements contained within them and the compositional layout of the images is what I'm trying to get across with this. So... Hopefully you do get something from it though. But save me rattling on here, let's dive into this week's edit. Both images are supplied with this. So first of all, drop in the portrait image and then on top of that, bring in and drop in the picture of the lion and just click OK. I've already resized them so that they fit each other exactly rasterize the lion layer and just to check how much they fit together just turn the opacity down on this layer and you will see from here we're going to create a hide all mask by holding down alt and pressing the mask button and then using the first soft round brush in the general brushes we are going to start to paint in the areas of the lion's face that you want to cover the portrait with. Now you'll notice on screen there is a pop-up that says brush opacity and swap. And this was just to show you during the two and a half minutes it took to paint this entire image, how often I changed the opacity of the brush to blend it into the skin areas and how often I swapped the foreground and background colors to add in areas and take out other areas. The more you use Photoshop, the more you will get used to all these changes happening and to change the brush very, very quickly while I was painting, I just pressed X on the keyboard and that meant I could focus on the image itself. Once I was happy with that, I pressed Shift, Alt, Command and E and created a new layer. This new layer is a combination of the underlying layers. And from here, I took the crop tool and extended the canvas. Using the newly created layer, I used the generative AI in the lasso tool to create extra elements to fill in the sides of the canvas. But you will notice that I have turned off all other layers except for that one. I found that by turning off the background layer and just making it transparent, that you get better results with the generative fill AI. Now, sometimes when you're doing this, you'll get a couple of results that you like. And the good thing about Photoshop is you can keep both results. So all you have to do, really, depending on what result that you are keeping, is copy up one of the layers. And that's just Command or Control and J. And then working in the mask, use a black or a white brush to either reveal areas or hide areas so that from both of these masks, you are getting the final result that you are after. Uh, both layers can be entirely different, but you can paint in with them or hide them depending on how you want the final result to be. 
Once you're happy with the results, just select the layers and Command and E and blend them all into one single layer. From here, what I've done is I've extended the top of the canvas again using the Lasso tool and Generative AI. Now, for this, I wanted a windblown effect of the lion's mane and the actual command that I typed in was windblown lion's mane. And as you can see, the results are all different. And again, sometimes I got the results I was after, sometimes I didn't. Once I was happy, I combined them all together using Shift, Alt, Control and E. And then from there on that single layer, I took that single layer into the camera raw filter. Now you'll notice that there's a difference in the darker tones in this. And I wanted to flatten out the darker tones within this and basically crush the blacks. So what you can do is you can take the spot and just go in and adjust it to how you want it to be. There you can see the massive difference there and I can take it down. So that's basically setting my black point within the image and then if you take the darkest area which is there and then just raise that slightly it crushes the black slightly now it could you can take it to a point where it's too much or too little you'll get to find how much you want this to affect your image and in here we can reduce or refine the saturation as well so I can take that down or I can take it back up there and that just allows me to basically get the image to the point that I am happiest with for it once I'm happy it's time to get into the masks and you'll notice that Lightroom detects this as a person, so you can choose any masks that you want for this. And I chose the pupils and also the lips because I wanted to bring back the saturation of the lips and also increase the saturation of the pupils themselves. Once I'm happy, just clicked OK and went back into Photoshop itself. Now the final part of this is just adding a texture and just grab the wooden texture and drop it on top. Again, you can rasterize this and then choose a blending mode. Now, soft light works best for this one and that will give you that effect. And then it's now time to refine this further. And for me, I basically just dropped the opacity of the layer itself to get to the point that I was most happiest. Once there, you can go in and adjust the saturation. It's now your image. You can take it to whatever point you want. For me, I wanted to crop it down a little bit as well. And this is the final image. Quick tutorial, but actually even quicker when you try it yourself. Hopefully you found that useful and hopefully it lets you just see with a couple of layers and adding a texture layer and blending through that you can get a half decent image and enjoy the process at the same time. It also teaches you the finer skills of refining the brushes when you are blending images. Next couple of videos are back to photography for the next couple of weeks and I hope that you tune back in for them as well. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.